that we've been working on in the ministry for the past year have been offshoots of the Belize Education Sector Plan 2021 to 2025. We call it our best plan. And the best plan we launched last year in August 2021, and it outlines four strategic areas that we're working on. Reforming the system of education, transforming teaching and learning, prioritizing underserved sectors, and maximizing human capital. So what we've done is we have worked these four areas, uh, identified what we call key result areas from each of them. And from those key result areas, we've identified strategic priorities. Everything that we've been doing for the past year is connected to those four areas. We are schools located in the South Side and we have several students who come from poor socioeconomic background. And as a result of that, all of these issues cause poor enrollment in our schools. And to help fix that and to address the problems brought about by COVID, this pilot project is giving the assistance in every area. What the Ministry of Education did was to select four of its schools Basically, it will give our students assistance in the areas of their fees, so they won't have to pay any fees for the school year. They will get uniforms in the form of three uniforms. They have access to a device if they need it, and they also get a free meal, whether it's breakfast in the morning or lunch in the afternoon. Education upliftment, of course, is not just education. Uh, it's also about our collaboration and engagement with other ministries, other members of the community, other stakeholders in education. It's also about working with the Ministry of Health, for example, uh, to make sure that our students have access to vaccines, that we are working on mental wellness issues, mental health issues, Belize Police Department to ensure that we are providing adequate security uh, in these communities for these students at their school, that they feel safe at their school. As I said earlier about transportation, making sure that we provide adequate, reliable transportation for these students. We're building better citizens through our students, which in turn trickle down to the families. So families will have better families which then in turn trickles down to the entire nation, building better human resources. Malnutrition affects the ability for students to learn because they are unable to remain focused. Um, they are unable to think properly. And teachers may interpret that as misbehavior rather than understanding that the student is unable to focus. Um, when that happens, our enrollment in school decreases. One of the strategic responses in our best plan is to reduce vulnerability among our young learners. How can we do that? We can do that by increasing school feeding programs. And that is how the National Healthy Start feeding program came about. The project also includes six primary schools in the Belize District, Orange Walk District, and Corozal District. Two schools have been selected from each district to participate in the program that is being sponsored and funded by FAO and AMICSID in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. With those six schools, we are providing a meal for every single child. So we, are, we will be covering um, over a thousand students in this project. It will be used to determine how do we proceed to implement the program across the country. We also received funding from the Republic of China, Taiwan, 
to expand the program to other schools. So this is uh, transforming certainly in, in other areas, in other districts, and there will be more students that will be able to benefit from this program. This can contribute to increased enrollment, increased attendance, and performance of our students in school. For the first time, I feel like the focus is really, emphasis is being put on special education. We've got a wonderful blueprint in our education plan to follow. Um, so, for example, the first thing is we wanted to provide more services and support for our families and our kids. Uh, so in February, we got an occupational therapist, a certified BCBA, a board certified behavior analyst, and a speech and language pathologist working with us in this country. It's a partnership with Therapy Adventures, an NGO in Chicago, and the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Transportation, and the Ministry of Human Development, Families and Indigenous Peoples Affairs. And these three professionals are living in the country and working with us to give services. And so this summer, first time, we had a special needs summer camp right here at the Mexico Sports Center, where we catered to about 20 children with varying disabilities, and they got one-on-one -on -one therapies, and they got group work, and it, it was just absolutely moving that these families were finally starting to get some support. Just being able to do trainings and work with the teachers and have them implement these things in the classroom and have parents um, learn how to, you know, maybe engage their kids in certain activities that they haven't been able to do before. Um, those are all amazing skills that I hope continue to spread. Uh, we really appreciate like all of the positive feedback and just the engagement that we've had in the community. Um, so this is this is something new and we really want to make it continuous, especially for those who are that absolutely really need that intense intervention. I feel personally my daughter is a little more ready for school. I think I'm going to see a different curio than what we saw last year. I think she's going to be a little more settled in the classroom and I think she'll be able to spend more time in the regular classroom. So I'm very optimistic for that. With patience and love and understanding, I feel like they could accomplish a lot. And I've witnessed it within the past couple of weeks, the progress that they have made. And it's incredible. It's truly something beautiful to witness. a technological era, right? We have kids that are basically born with devices in their hands. So we can't expect them to start school and go back to just having a traditional way of learning with just chalkboard and you know whiteboard. So we need to learn how to incorporate technology more into the classroom and Connect Ed will help us facilitate that. So before what we had was an Internet for Schools project where 197 schools were getting 500 meg internet connection. But th what this really meant was um, these schools had a drop with the ONT or the modem were just installed in either the principal's office or it was installed in a computer lab. But then schools didn't have the capacity to expand the infrastructure on their campus so that really just lived in in those buildings that the installations were done in so we went back to the drawing board with digi um, earlier this year to start to negotiate and talk about a solution that would give students access to internet when they get back to school so that's how the partnership came up so connect ed will include an installation of the digi wi-fi managed solution so this will be network switches, installation of wireless access points, um, installation of security standards for content and web filtering. There will be support and maintenance and 24-7 monitoring. We will make sure that wherever you are on the campus, you will have internet access. So you can get on your device, on your laptop, on your phone, and you will be able to search the internet. We still have a long way to go. We must be laser focused and fully committed expanding the broadband internet infrastructure to every corner of our country so that our people, wherever they live and go to school, can have equal access to reliable, adequate internet services. This is no longer optional. It is an absolute requirement 
for quality education in 2022 and beyond. Technology is a major component of our Belize Education Sector Strategy Plan 2021 to 2025. We at the Ministry of Education recognize that the innovative use of technology is essential to the goal of achieving a modern, efficient education system. The 501 Academy is a portal, a web-based portal, that will host open education resources for Belizean students and um, teachers. It will be a site where teachers can go and access resource and materials. There are already live teaching from the summer um, camp sessions there. But what we never had in Belize is a single operation that curates and creates open education resources for the Belizean curriculum and the Belizean classroom. So we will have eventually developed a local bank of live localized Belizean lessons where students can say, wow, that's my teacher, I know her. Uh, a perfect example of one project within this operation that has started is the Let's Catch Up program. Um, and in this case, the resources come in the form of live streams uh, in, in which every day we come to the Love Foundation. They partnered with us on this project and they allowed us to come in and use their studio space here in Melbourne. We have lead teachers that prepare these lessons. We had songs, we um, fostered blending for students to read and we did a lot of oral reading activities for the literacy segment. We live stream the lessons to classroom centers across the country. And yes, it's aimed towards students and teachers and the Belizean classroom, but when we say open, we also mean just anyone that has an interest to learn something. It will be there for you to access. As we are moving towards this technological era, 501 Academy is a great innovative way of how networking across the country can work. 501 Academy has an important place in curriculum reform because if you are going to talk about new approaches to teaching, this is one of the new approaches to teaching. You incorporate digital resources in your activities in class. The TLI will do for teachers what the 501 Hub is supposed to do for students. So when a teacher needs to strengthen his or her teaching competence, the place for the teacher to go is the TLI. Teachers need to maintain their license over a five-year period by engaging in 120 uh, CPD hours, all right, over a five-year period. So whenever you log into the TLI and you sign up for a training, each training based on the intensity, based on the scope and coverage, uh, each training is assigned a certain level of CPD hours. So you log into that, you register for the training, you complete the training activities, you are then awarded a CPD certificate for that training. They also provide like the annual teaching calendar so teachers know exactly what holiday is going to fall on which day, when school is going to open, when it's going to close. There is also whereby teachers can actually just fill out a form and see how many credit hours they have. In the past, they had to go to one of the district education center and it was a process. So teachers would have to wait or they do not know how many credit hours they have. Now, they, it, it is done simply online. They just pull out that form, they can get that information. The idea is to ensure that there is a more timely um, feedback given to teachers so that they're able to keep track of their own records. So it's, it's, the, this, the system is, is um, grounded in what is outlined in the education rules. It's just that the TLI has now made it more accessible through a digitized process. That's certainly my view as the Minister the of Education. Is the plan to not have these exams this school year? No, we won't have okay. those exams this school year. And, and as the Minister of Education, my hope is that we don't have those exams um, in the future. Curriculum reform process is a bold initiative by the Ministry of Education to 
look at the curriculum where there are identified gaps and try to bridge those gaps. Specifically looking at um, content overload and also looking at how the national curriculum can align with the national goals and needs of the country. We've been asking our students to memorize information and regurgitate it and then we test them for that knowledge that they memorized. And this will only take us a certain way in preparing our young people for the challenges of the future for developing our country. If we look at where we are as a world, advanced countries are now in what is called the fourth industrial revolution. We're talking about artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, the internet of things. And this is what their students are being exposed to because that's the world that they will live in. The third industrial revolution was about information technology. And we in Belize and other countries as well around the world are still struggling to even enter the third industrial revolution. We need to prepare our students, our children, for the future that they will live in. And this is the big shift that we're going to be experiencing going forward. We're now, in particular, our teachers will focus not just on transmitting that knowledge, which is very important, but also ensuring that students are able to understand how that knowledge can be applied in the real world. So for instance, a major part of the curriculum that has been infused is financial literacy and road and personal safety. So we're hoping that with these two strands, we'll be able to encourage students to make wiser financial decisions and also curtail the number of accidents that occur. You know, So these are just ways in which there is direct connection between what the country needs and what the country wants to address and what the curriculum is able to um, offer, provide to students. All of this we're expecting will boost the excitement of the teachers and the students in the classroom. We hope that that will lead to even greater attendance and that we, at the end of the day, will be able to have our students build those competences that will lead to a better life for them. And our vision is that we will be able to create a system that does better in three areas, access, equity, and quality. So our vision is that we will have a system that does better in those three areas. We, we really believe in this ministry that improving education is improving quality of life that if you are more educated, you stand a better chance of being more productive. You will be a better person and you will be a better citizen. You are better able to contribute to the development of Belize. That's why we do what we do. We need to work on that and we need to work together. So really, if, if we can accomplish any of those things, I think we will be just a little bit closer to achieving that vision.